All right, sweet. So great job in going through that first video. It was really basic and easy. And now we're set in a good position to kind of deep take a deeper dive into the SCSS and CSS of our project and actually build out some CSS grids and learn a lot about CSS grid. So if you didn't watch the first video, go watch it or click the link in the description to get the source code and just check that out if you want. Uh, it's all on CodePen. But without further ado, let's jump right into this and hurry and get some stuff done and learn. This is where we're at right now. If you didn't watch the last video, go ahead and watch that real quick. It's nine minutes. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk a bit about grid and grid gap, and we're basically just gonna throw a bunch of grids on here so it looks something like this without all these styles, okay? So let's go ahead and pull up this resource that I want you to look at, okay? I actually recorded this video just barely and messed up on it a little bit, or it didn't mess up, but it was a little too jumbled, so I just wanted to make it more clear for you, so I'm re-recording it. But basically, if you Google CSS tricks grid, you're gonna get this link. I'm also gonna put this in the description, so go ahead and find that if you wanna look at this. This is by far the best uh, CSS grid resource. This is gonna give you all the concepts and explanations of concepts, okay? Since this is a project-based course, I'm not gonna explain the concepts in depth, but I will explain them a little bit, and I will uh, show you where to read about them, okay? With my experience, it's just easier to reference the concepts and do projects. And that's how I learned personally. Might be different for you, but reading this isn't gonna really teach me anything. I have to figure it out while reading it, build some projects, and then I'll come back and understand it a lot better. And then it helps as a reference. So I love these kind of resources, but I also really truly believe that a uh, pro building a project is necessary with these resources, not just reading the resources. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give our deal here a grid, right? Notice how we have subscribe on YouTube and record some free content right there, and then we have record some free content right here. These are two separate cards, right? Each are a card, or a list, sorry, a list. So list and list. There'd, have, there'd be two in here and then one in here according to how much data we have here, okay? I'm just gonna change this uh, second one this in the second list, I want to change this to a different label since it's the same. So I'll just say, uh, drink some H2O fam. I don't know. And then I'll just say like Jan 26th. Okay. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to define our grid for our layout. Okay. So let's say in layout in our CSS, let's say, let's see display grid and then we'll say grid template rows we're gonna have one row and then grid template columns we're gonna have 200 pixels and 200 pixels okay normally I would use the fractional units but if you don't understand fractional units I'm not going to explain that if you do know what fractional units are and you're just here to do this project use fractional units don't use pixels okay just as a challenge since I'm doing it differently it's going to require a little more brain power for you to figure out Okay, so that's what we have. Notice how it's looking a lot more similar to this now, okay? Next thing I wanna throw in, and that's just from those three lines. You could probably even get rid of rows and still have this. Yep, but you wanna be pretty explicit with your grids. You don't wanna just leave it hanging or it's gonna move around randomly. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at this and notice how there's that gap in between there. I wanna add that gap in between here. Because if we go to our card, list card on line 19 here, and we give this a background color of blue, you're gonna notice there's no gap. But as soon as we go to layout and we say grid gap is 10 pixels, you're gonna see that we have a gap in between it now, okay? So again, these four lines and then that background is all I've done in this video. Now that gap is gonna give our layout that gap. Now let's look at our HTML and see what's going on. Okay, so we put that on our list, on our layout, Let's see, yeah, our, our layout. And then we have two lists in our layout, that list, which is the first two, and then that list, which is the one, okay? So when we add a gap in layout, it's gonna add a gap in between each item. There's only two items in here, two parent divs, right? Obviously there's more items within these divs, but the direct children of layout, there's only two. So it's creating a gap in between those. If I were to copy a list, you're gonna see that there's another gap. Now the reason it, it uh, doesn't go over there is because we define these as 200 pixels. If I do another 200 pixels, it's gonna do that. Okay, so I'll save that and I'll get rid of that second list. 
and I actually want you to add another list here. So we're gonna add three instead of just two. Let's go ahead and copy this layout list and then change this a bit. My name on Twitter is Max Codes with a one. It's freaking annoying. Go tweet Max Codes and tell him to give him my give him that name give that name to me. All right. So basically I'll put my birthday or something. I just want the dates to be a bit different. Okay. So basically we have all these lists. Let's go back in to here and add another one. And let me show you a bit about repeat. Okay. Now what we can do is we can get rid of this and we can say repeat and we can say auto fit and we can say 200 pixels. That's basically just going to automatically change it based on how many we have in here. So with this, now when we go in here and we get rid of this, it's going to be automatic. Okay. If we add in a fourth, you're going to see that it adds another and we don't have to add in another thing. So you can already see the power of grid a bit in that it's responsive. So like if you had a front end application written in react or whatever language, I just use react personally, and you add in more data from the database, it's going to automatically create your rows and you don't have to change anything in your SCSS. So you can see how layout or CSS grid can be a very powerful tool. And there's a lot more than just repeat. Let me tell you. All right. There's also a function called called autofill, but I wouldn't worry about the differences there because even I get confused on the differences every now and then. It's something hard to remember. All right. So that's what we got there. Let's go ahead and define our grid for this now. Okay. Now to make it a, a little bit more clear, let's go to our third list and let's copy a couple cards in here just so we can see the differences uh, throughout the cards because there's going to be gaps in between each one of these, right? Let's change all these. I'll say follow maxcodes.io on Instagram. I use .io. I also have an account on Instagram, just maxcodes, but I have two different types of accounts. <clears throat> I like to post a lot of cool pictures on maxcodes and then a lot about dev stuff on maxcodes.io. Okay, and then for here, I'll just say follow max.codes on Medium. I write about uh, this kind of stuff. The, I actually convert some of my videos into articles on Medium, if you want to check that out. Okay, I'll say January. And then I'll say October. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into our list card now. And let's just say display is grid. Okay, and then let's say grid gap is 10 pixels. And you'll see we get that effect, okay? All right, so that's a little bit about grid. Let's go ahead and look at this. And let's give each one of these a background color of white and then this a background color of ghost white. So we have to change our blue on line 22 to ghost white. And then what we need to do is we need to say Instead of grid gap, let's just go to each card and let's just say margin. Well, yeah, let's just say on each card, we have a margin of 10 pixels. Okay, there you go. Now you can see what's going on here. And then if we add the grid gap, it's gonna further separate it. Of 20 pixels, let's say. Yeah, you get it. The uh, grid gap is useful in a lot of situations, but it doesn't, uh, it does it within the container, unless we use something like box sizing. That might do it. Yep. All right, well, that's a bit about grid, uh, CSS grid, and that's how we can get the majority of our grids on the screen. We only need one more grid, and that's gonna be inside of, actually, that's all we need. Oh, okay, this is what we need. We need, um. We need a grid inside of our list, okay, to separate the cards. That's the one I thought I was doing. So let's say display is grid. And then we'll say grid gap is 20 pixels. Okay. So that's a bit about grid. Let's go ahead and end the video here. And then in the next video, we're going to add in a lot more styles and probably almost finish it up. We'll have like a few more videos, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, leave down, leave your criticism down below and your compliments. And 
I'll be glad to change my channel according to what you want to see. All right. See you guys in the next video.